to my live call tonight. My name is Jeff Outgilbert, and I'm going to talk about, this is free Friday, so we're going to open it up for questions, but I already got some questions I'm going to, I'm going to address tonight. now for 40 years I share a lot of what I've learned in my journey on these live calls I started in this business totally bust broke I had to sell a junk truck to get started put 200 in my business and for the last almost 27 years now I've been full-time in network marketing so I'm gonna give some acknowledgments out to those who are joining Daisy in Florida how are you Daisy nice to see you and who else do we have to, else tonight jo gonna join us? Carlos Santana. Maybe he brought his guitar, man. I don't know. <laughs> Good to see you, Carlos. Valerie, how are you? Roberto. Hey, como esta? Good to see you. Christy in Savannah. Man, I love Savannah. Beautiful city. Carlos in Texas. Yes, that's right. Uh, but yeah, Savannah is beautiful. Love seeing those live oak trees. Oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. Um, and who else is joining us? V Valerie from North Carol North Dakota, excuse me, because I'm gonna be talking about you in a little bit. Lita, nice to see you from Ecuador, Flavio, Susan, so nice to see you as well uh, this evening. And Kim from Springfield, Missouri. I used to do meetings down in Springfield, Missouri. When was that? That was in the 90s. Yeah. Used to go down there and, and do events. That was a lot of fun. Great memories. Okay. And uh, who else is on, uh, joining us? And then we have... Uh, let me see who's coming out of the woods to join us this evening. All right, John, good to see you from Baltimore. I hope you're doing well, my friend. And then we got Dr. Uh, Dr. AJ from, uh, from Australia, Daniel from Chile. That's amazing how we're all around the world already. Amy, North uh, New Jersey, what am I talking about? New Jersey, Angelica from Arizona and uh, that's right, Doc, Dr. J from Australia. You're the furthest one out so far. Just hope somebody from New Zealand doesn't show up, okay? So far, you, <laughs> you're ahead. Okay. I hope everybody's having a great week this week. And you're being productive, getting things done, staying positive in your business. Shirley from... Um, Indonesia, nice to see you. Amanda from Australia. We got two Aussies on this call now. That's awesome. Nice to see you on the call. Um, and Rocia in, yeah, California. Okay, awesome. Gary, what's up? And uh, George in New York City. I hope you're doing well. Yes, nice to see you, Shirley. Good to see you. And, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> this is, uh, 
I don't know. This is more like of a, you know, sort of a fall shirt. I don't know, but it's sort of Western. I don't, I don't know. It's just one of those things. Branded in Arkansas. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about you in a minute. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> cool dude. Good to see you tonight. Yeah, so um, I want to get right into it, okay? So, <clears throat> and I haven't seen Ivan. Hey, Wade, nice to see you. <clears throat> I haven't seen Ivan uh, Revere uh, show up, but uh, I guess he'll catch the replay. So <clears throat> this is, again, Free Friday. So if you have a question, you can post it, and I'll do my best to answer it. I'm going to go through these. When I did the post today, and I said, if you have any questions, leave them here in this post, and I'll, I'll call you out, and I'll address it. So that's what I'm getting ready to do uh, right now is address some of these questions that have come from some great people around the world. And Ivan is in Texas. And this is a common question, and that's why I chose the theme for this video, uh, the subject theme, because uh, a lot of people that have family, you know, married, have children, all that, they struggle to find balance in the business. And, um, and so here's his question. He says, my my question for the day would be, how do you create a balance <clears throat> when you're, you are barely starting between family, a nine to five, a nine to five job and the business, that is the network marketing business. What do you prioritize? <clears throat> so that's a good question. That's a very good question, Ivan. Um, I think a lot of people struggle with that. You know, it's, it, yeah, so here's the thing. Um, again, we talk about levels of desire, right? When people enter the network marketing profession, there's different levels of, a, of desire. We always assume they have the same desires that we do. You know, like when, when I came in this thing like a ball of fire, I thought everybody had that same motivation, those same reasons that that what what i wanted they wanted um that's not the case everybody's different so <clears throat> it really just depends and and so so i don't think there's one answer for that so again the you know the 80 15 5 if you're not familiar with it is that 80 percent of your business uh, or people in your organization are going to be people that want to earn zero to five hundred dollars a month maybe maybe more maybe a thousand but that's pretty much it. So, uh, and again, it's like some guy that was trying to hammer me today about, uh, you know, that most people don't make it in network marketing. And I said, well, you, you don't get it, man. Most people that got into a network marketing company had no intentions of making it. They wanted to use the product. And so you'll find that with many companies, uh, uh, the vast majority of their memberships are customers. So is that wrong? <laughs> no, it's not wrong. It is what it, it is what it is. So so <clears throat> but then you got the 15 percenters because I'm talking about 80, 15, 5, 15 who want to earn 3,000 a month, five percenters who want to become six figure, maybe seven figure income earners. Everyone's different when they in, you know and you're, you're going to know by the language, the way they talk and the way they do. Okay, obviously a, a 15 percenter is a lot different from an 80 percenter. A five percenter, very much different. And keep in mind, that's not levels of results, that's levels of income. But let's go into right now, how do you balance uh, family life and all that? <clears throat> and you got a nine to five business, what, what do you prioritize? Okay, here's the thing. You know, it's like the, it's like the, the farmer with the harvest, right? And when the harvest finally comes, does, does the farmer have the same schedule that he used to have when he was waiting for it, when it was in the, in, in the early stages of growth? Of course not. When the harvest finally came, it was time now to hustle. And he might be sleeping out in the fields. He might be too tired to even walk back to the house, okay? Because why? Because he's got a certain window of time to get that harvest done. So there's urgency in that period of time. And I use that as an illustration though for, <clears throat> I think it's important when we just gotta know where we are on the 80-15-5 scale. 
And, and so if we have a burning desire to be more, do more, then it's important it, 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 to sit down with your spouse, okay? And then explain to your spouse what it is you wanna do. Instead of just being gone or you're not available or you're just not involved in the family anymore, uh, you know, you don't want them to wonder that maybe you got a boyfriend on the side or a girlfriend on the side. You know what I'm saying? You need to sit down and explain these things. Say, listen, and listen, um, you know, I'm in this company. I'm very committed to it. I love it. I love the products. I love the upline. I love the system. I love the training. I love everything they're doing. I know I can make it in this business. And I know this can make a big difference in our family life. You might... If there are struggles, then you can add, hey, we, you know, you know the struggles we've gone through. I don't wanna live like that. You don't wanna live like that. So here's what I'm asking. I'm asking that for a short period of time, for a period of time, I'm gonna be spending more time on the business so I can get some speed, so I can get some momentum with my team. I've gotta get this thing going and the go slow approach will never work. I mean, it's like the shuttle, you know, it's. Uh, you know, it's going to take a lot of energy. It's going to take, you know, I mean, a lot of push to get that shuttle off and up and running. So that's the thing. So I think, number one, sit down and have a frank talk and see how your spouse feels about it. It's important that they understand. Also, if you have children that are at a responsible age, is it possible that they could wash the dishes instead of you always doing it? Uh, maybe they can also do a little cooking or... What about some of the cleaning, like, you know, the washer, the dryer, the clothes, whatever, the towels, everything, you know, the, the stuff you've got to do every day that you normally did. <clears throat> I'm assuming it's a woman in this case, right? <laughs> I feel sorry for you guys if you're doing all that. Anyway, but that you normally did, that you've got to explain that you're going you're gonna to really be right now focused on, that, on this. And then, and then you've got the support of the family. That's, that's my approach on that. Now, let's go back to schedule issues and things like that. I can only tell you what I did. And, I, and so I did have a, a nine to five. I did. Before I started in network marketing full-time almost 27 years ago, I would go out during the day and work all day, come back, yes, tired, and then sit down, have dinner, with the wife and then I'd say, okay, I gotta go down the hallway now and for the next two hours, I'm gonna be busy making phone calls. So after that, I'll see you. Now it doesn't have to be two hours, whatever time you're gonna allot for it. And, and here's what I want you to understand here is that you gotta be a part-time success story first before you'll ever be a full-time success story. And so that's what I want you to get good at. I can tell you that part-time leaders manage their time better than full-time leaders because they got so little of it. So they're very possessive of it. They're very careful with what they're doing with their time. They don't follow up on people that are not interested. They don't follow up on people that are not gonna be productive in this business. They don't do chit chat with people who, though they're in your team, are never going to do anything. They're not going to sponsor. They're not going to grow your business. So they're very careful and selective about where their time goes. So that's the one thing that I would tell you, Ivan, is that, and then here's the other thing, Ivan. <clears throat> um, I know because you are a, a, a Spanish leader, uh, you guys are awesome. One thing about the Spanish people is they love to get together face to face when it comes to prospecting. They go out, do meetings, things like that. Totally cool, totally fine. But it's also gonna be totally challenging if that's the only way you build your business. It's gonna be very problematic for your family. Let me give you one quick example. This actually happened twice in my church, okay? One time uh, when I was, uh, um, there was a, a group of Spanish sitting behind me at our church. And then after the service was over, I looked uh, behind and, and they said, I know you. And I looked at them and I said, oh really, uh, who are you? And they told me, I said, where do you live? Florida. Oh, well, I don't get down to Florida that much. They said, but I know you. And I said, the name of my company. And they said, Platino. <laughs> 
Turned out they were in my downline. They had a middle rank position in the compensation plan, but the, but he, and he, but he quit. So I said, well, why did you quit? And he said, well, because I was always away from the family. I was always out away from the family presenting to prospects, meeting prospects, doing meetings. You know, it's all this face-to-face -face stuff, you know. And, of course, he lives in Florida and lives in a city. And, you know, the, you talk about travel time, too, on top of it. So the, the guy's away. He's just absent. And, it, it, you know, he was on the verge of a divorce because his wife was not happy about it. Children were not happy about it because they weren't seeing the father. And he says, so I decided to let it go. And, and the son said, that was the day we got our father back. We were so glad he quit. And it was like, uh, 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 you know, just stab me in the heart, right? And I said, it didn't have to be that way. It did not have to be that way. You don't have, I mean, when I started 21 years ago, next month, December, 21 years ago, I never left my driveway for three months when I built my business, when I started for 90 freaking days, after 90 days, not bringing a team in, starting all over again, talking to people. We had, I had 800 people on my downline. No social media. No, I wasn't even doing anything on the internet. I didn't even own a computer. And I did that 21 years ago. So the thing about it is, Ivan, make sure you use a good video. You need to get good at sending out a video, picking up the phone. Let them know the video's coming. Don't just send it. Follow them up right after they've seen that video. Put them in the business as a customer or as a distributor. That's it. End of story. No more steps, no more complications, no more trips, no more being gone from the family so much. Because I can see it in your message, man. You lack a system. Just reach out to me. I'll be glad to help you. And, um, and, so, and what do I prioritize? Again, sometimes you have to take time away from the family to really get it. The problem with a lot of people is if they, if they, if they focus hard on the business to get it up and going right, then they feel guilty because they're not with the family. On the other hand, when they're uh, spending a lot of time with the family, they're thinking about the business. And they're not happy about that either. Just understand, there are going to be periods of time where you're going to do more. Just like the farmer, when the harvest came, he had to hustle. So he wasn't going to be able to spend time with the family, you know, going to the state fair and going to the movie theater whatever whatever he did with his family okay was a matter of fact the, probably the whole family was in the field so thinking so there are going to be periods of time you're going to do more and then the times that you're not then enjoy that time with your family wherever you are be there that's the thing even with your family put your phone away and then Warner, uh, Taylor, I think you got your uh, question answered. He had a question about uh, should uh, <clears throat> he leaves his friend list or his friends in his Facebook open to public? Uh, should he accept people who send a friend request and their Facebook friends are not open? It's not open to public. Of course, you never want to leave your friends open because, believe it or not, there are these people that don't have good motives and they belong to other companies. And what they'll do is they'll take your friends since they assume they're in your company and they now have a new prospect list. They say, thank you, Warner, for being stupid. Of course, you're not stupid, man. I'm joking with you. Just don't do that. Don't leave your list open. Don't do that. So, uh, um, but I mean, yeah, I learned that a long time ago. That's that's a no-no. Now, <clears throat> now, we got Valerie and Valerie is from Grand forks north dakota everybody give her a hand oh, she's awesome valerie okay so valerie so she asked the question uh what would you say is a good dmo um daily method of operation folks for those of you who don't know or better yet when you were uh early in building your business what was your dmo okay so again i just told you what my dmo was my DMO was eight to faint, okay? So, 
eight in the morning till I faint for 90 days. And I'm still, still running on that speed. Again, it's like the shuttle. Once it gets off, once it escapes gravity, there is no resistance. It takes very little power for that thing to fly. So, uh, so that's the way it is with your business. And, um, and so <clears throat> when you talk about a daily method of operation, you know, again, our business is all about adding new customers and new distributors to your business, right? That's what it's all about. So the thing about it is you should always be prospecting. You should always be prospecting. And so once you, once you begin your day, first of all, you need to look at people that you said you were going to get back with. In, back then, this is 21 years ago, so you don't have to do it this way. We're, we're more advanced, right? I remember going down to Walmart and I would get those, you know, those index cards and I would have me an, uh, a case for those index cards. And then what I would do is I would have uh, December to January. And then I would have uh, in front of that one to 31. And so, and so what I would do was if somebody said, and if I called somebody I was prospecting and, and they said, well, you know, really, I, I, I just don't think right now this is a good time for me. I'd say, oh yeah, sure, sure. I mean, they might be going, you know, just things are going on in their life, right? I'd say, well, you know what? You want me to check back with you in a month from now? And the reply would be, well, maybe two months from now. Oh yeah, sure, absolutely. So if it's, in, you know, if it's in January, then I'm going to check back with them in early March. And so that's exactly what I would do is then I would go ahead and write everything we talked about on that, you know, in that call. And then I would pop it in March. And then when March came, I would go to March, pull those cards out. And then I decide uh, at that point who to start following up with. Now you can use that same concept. You don't have to go to Walmart and get, that's a, that's a poor man's tracking system on following up with people. That's like a $5 system. Okay. That's the way it was done back then. And, uh, but I'll tell you what, it worked. I didn't let people slip through the cracks. I always, I was tenacious. I was, I was an animal when it came to follow up. So then that's what I would do. I would call them up and say, okay. I'd say, you said, call back Miss Lee from South Korea. Nice to see you. Uh, you said, uh, you said, uh, uh, follow up and here I am. Now they're going to be impressed when you do that, by the way, they're going to be impressed. Uh, because if you will, if you're that tenacious and following up, that means you're going to be a good sponsor. So when you say, Hey, in this business, you're not going to be doing this alone. I mean, I'm going to be with there with you at your side, helping you get started. I'll train you. I'll work with you. I'll run with you. We're going to have fun. We're going to make some money. And they'll believe it because you're so tenacious on follow-up. But that's the thing that you have to do. When you ask me about my daily method of operation, number one priority, of course, recruiting. Number two is who do I follow up with today is always the question. Who do I follow up with? And so whether, and, and so, and then keep in mind now, Valerie, it doesn't look like you do a lot with Facebook. That's okay that you don't. But I mean, I'm just saying when I looked at your page, so, uh, and you mentioned that you have a list, you like to, Valerie used to, uh, uh, she had a ser customer service background and she had one approach avoidance, I call it to the business approach avoidance, meaning we, we want this, we want to make it in this. And, but, but when it comes time to showing up, we turn and run. <laughs> okay. So. She, because so many people in the past have been rude to her in a company that she worked in, not network marketing company, it's a customer service background. And uh, so she got so many, uh, so much negativity, she has this fear that she's going to get the same thing. So here's the thing, Valerie, here's, here's, here's the, it's a mindset thing, right? So just have the, ad, you, you get what you expect. And if you expect negativity, if you expect them not to be interested in what you're going to say, you're probably going to prove yourself right. And we all want to prove ourselves right. So sometimes we can even self-sabotage our presentation 
or the tonality of what we're saying is just, the energy is just wrong. And your prospect can sense it, you know? I mean, you gotta be sold first, then you gotta sell your prospect. So the thing about it is, what I, what I recommend that you just challenge yourself to do is, is, is just have an affirmation that the people I'm gonna to talk to today are gonna be interested. They are gonna be interested. The people that I talk to today, some may not be ready, but one day they will be ready. See, I don't believe in no's. And if you take no and you flip it, it's the word is on. The word is on. And that's the way I see it. I don't see no's. The other thing is, don't get addicted to the outcome or, you know, like it's that it's so important that you get that person. It's so important that that, that person join you. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. See, here's the thing. If they say no, they made the right decision. That needs to be your attitude. So you have to have this mental posture where you're, you're you know, not, that nothing's going to phase you. See, because if, if that person is not the person that's going to get you to where you want to go, you don't need that person. Uh, God did you a blessing in that they said no, because you're wasting your time. And that, that should tell you right now, and I need to move on to the next person because you're not, you're, you're in the wrong place. That's not the person for you. Not everybody, and not everybody is wired for this. We have to understand that, friends. Not everybody is. I mean, we used to say when we prospect people, this is in the old days, okay? Uh, we used to say, um, uh, <laughs> when they would say, uh, well, I don't think so. And we used to say, well, that's okay, you know. I mean, we need people to clean our houses and wash our cars. This isn't for everybody. <laughs> Oh, we were mean back then. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. Um, but have the mindset that they are going to be interested. And if they say no, they're not saying no to you. Okay. It's just that this, this is either, and you got to know, is this bad timing? And I'll, and I'll ask that question. I'll say, is this, is this not so much that you're not interested as that it's bad timing for you? And, and so many times I heard people say, yeah, it's bad timing. It really is. Okay, I get that. I'll get back with you. When, you know, maybe I could check back in a month from now. Would that be okay? And the, the other thing too is, say, so you know what? Maybe you don't have time for the business, but I bet you, you would love this product. And we have a money back guarantee. I would love for you to at least be a customer. And if you choose not to do the business, that's fine but you're gonna get some really great benefits out of this product. You know, and then a lot of times when you, you know, people that use products, they become your best distributors because they absolutely love your products. So when we talk about daily method of operation, again, uh, and Valerie, I think you told me that you work, I mean, you have a, you have a, a, a job, I think. I, I thought that's what you said somewhere. Anyway, but, Here's the thing, you know, the time that you have is the time that you have. It's like I said about the other gentleman in Texas, okay? It's just dedicate that time, get laser focused. Mindset is important. Again, forget the past. The past doesn't equal the future. I mean, I went through a lot of negative experiences, so I'm very sympathetic with you. I went through a lot of negative experiences with other companies. I didn't make it. I was, a, you know, I, they, those companies didn't last. I was like the Z top distributor in companies that no longer exist. What do I do with those pins? What do I do with those awards? <laughs> so, so when I went into my last company uh, 21 years ago, do you think I had some negative baggage? I sure did. I sure did. But you know what? Here's the thing. I worked on myself. So just keep working on yourself. I, 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 I was listening to Anthony Robbins every day, every day, pumping that stuff in my head. And just washing out the negativity and putting the right kind of thoughts in my mind. So again, make sure you stay focused on your DMO on income producing activities, income producing activities. Don't worry about the fact that your desk is messy. A messy desk means you're working. 
A clean desk means you're doing nothing. Okay? <laughs> so, so, but stay focused on that and then uh, reach out to me anytime. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's really a good question. Now, Brandon uh, Flood from Arkansas, he says, hey, Jeff, in your book, now, when he talks about in my book, he's talking about my book that came out this year, July 4th, Reaching the Peak. It became a number two uh, bestseller on Amazon in the category network marketing. He said, uh, and by the way, that book's going to be coming out. I, I heard from my author, uh, my publisher rather today, that that's going to be out in multiple languages. They just signed a deal with a, a, a international book publishing um, company. So um, anyway, I'm excited about that. But he says, hey, Jeff, in your book, where you say prospecting strangers and while you're waiting in a long line, what is a good way to start the conversation with people? For example, Black Friday. That's today, right? Is that today? <laughs> I lose track. It's coming up. So what is a good approach for starting a conversation in a long line? Well, you know, that's, that's good, Brandon. I love it. I, and I think uh, a lot of people uh, that have been so engrossed in social media for so long have forgotten how to even talk to people because they're so used to texting. I mean, you go to restaurants and you, you see families sitting at a table. They don't talk. The parents, the children all have iPhones and they're texting one another. <laughs> that's messed up, right? <laughs> so, but we, as professional networkers, we got, we, we're in the people business. We are in the people business. Everybody's so concerned about having social media skills, and they lost their people skills. I, I sent somebody a message. Matter of fact, uh, uh, somebody sent me a friend request. I, I, I always message them back. Say, hey, awesome. We're connected in Facebook. Look forward to getting to know you better. A lady messaged me right back. She says, do you do that to everybody that sends you a friend request? I said, yes, that's just being courteous. That's, that's a people skill, communicating. Hi, hello, you know. Anyway, so going back to Brandon, so whether you're standing uh, in line at a store or you're at Starbucks, you women, you, you, you girls are masters at this. Guy, I mean, guys, you know, don't do as good, but women are just masters at the ability to talk. And so, and ladies, you know this. So what, what's one of the first things you look at when you look at another woman? Shoes, the shoes. <laughs> so easy to look down and say, hey, hey, I, I love those shoes. You don't mind me to ask, where'd you get those? And they're like, oh, wow, you know, thank you. Well, yeah, I was down at TJ Maxx, you know, and, and blah, blah, blah. And that's the conversation's rolling, the conversation's rolling. Of course, Brandon, listen, if you're at a Starbucks line, don't look at a guy's shoes and say, hey, man, I love your shoes, because then he's going to probably back off and run, okay? This is not a, a line for guys to use, okay? You know, <laughs> you might be looking at your phone and saying, wow, did you see that? Did you see that ball game with, uh, you know, football is really big right now, right? So Baltimore, man. Baltimore's just killing it out there. The Patriots are really going to have a challenge this year. Boy, you want to get a guy going on a conversation, just talk about that. I mean, it's just guy it's guy talk, Brandon. Guy talk. You know what I'm saying? And 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 so, you know, and and get the conversation going with that person. It and that and here's the thing. Pay attention to what they're saying. Ask more questions about what they're saying or confirm what they're saying with a viewpoint on what they said that is a personal experience or what you've observed and then and then and then that's it you just and then finally Brandon at the end of the conversation you know because you only got a window of time and you got to give your coffee order right you might you know, they might even invite you to sit down at the table that's okay if they do uh, and, but but then what you say is you know I really enjoyed our conversation are you in Facebook oh you are Hey, could we add one another? I'd like to stay in touch. I really, I don't know that I'll ever see you again. You know, just like that. Or if they're in, if they say, well, I don't use Facebook. I use Instagram. Hey, same thing. Hey, well, that's okay. Could, could we add one another? Stay in touch. I don't know that I'll ever see you again. And I enjoyed our conversation. It's being people. It's being social. 
All these people on social media, they're, they're not social, you know? They got it down to Facebook groups and text messaging. They don't know the first thing about network marketing. They really don't. <laughs> That's the reason why I still have a team after 21 years. <laughs> I love on people. So you got to love on people, okay? All right, so that's it. You need more than that, message me. John from Baltimore, John Johnson, <clears throat> he asked the question, when is it good to go full-time in network marketing? Well, I think it's great to go full-time in network marketing. Um, but I'll tell you what, if you, here's the way I look at it, okay? Let's say you're in network marketing, you have an income coming. Let's say you're making $20,000 a year. Okay, so somewhere around there, 2,000 a month, right? You built a good business, okay? Your wife is happy, John. Your wife is happy because you got a job and let's say your job pays you $80,000 a year. She has a job and it pays $70,000 a year. And of course you live in Baltimore and that's taxes are high, cost of living, uh, mm, man. But that 20000 you bring in, man, does that make the difference? That makes the difference. You're a hero with her, man. I mean, she's giving you massages and everything, right? But let's just, let's just say that you decide you're going to go for it. I mean, you, you've talked to your upline. You've seen what they did. You heard their stories. By golly, you're, you're just going to go for it and you're going to do it. And you go in and tell your boss, I'm leaving. And that's what you do. And then you go for it. But it doesn't go the way you exactly thought it would. It's going to take longer. Okay? You're not having the kind of results you planned in the beginning. As a result, that lost income, how does your wife feel about that $2,000 a month you're making now? And how does she feel about your network marketing company? She hates it. And that's the problem with premature full-time. Premature full-time. I never encourage people to go full-time right away. I never, I just, I'm just saying, I don't discourage it, but I'm saying, I, I, you know, I don't encourage it because that's a recipe of disaster because that will d discourage them and they could even quit. So here's the, here's the thing. So what do you do? Okay, here's what you do, John. I want you to get your network marketing company to at least equal what you're making now in your job, okay? And I want it to, it's, it cannot be less than that for at least six months. I mean, you can't hit that income level and then say, I'm there, because the following month after you quit your job, uh, in many cases, sometimes it'll go down. Because why? Because you had a burst of activity. You might've had promotions going on in your company. There might've been promotions going on in your group. You might've been doing promotions. Got everybody jacked up, right? Okay, so that's what they do. So now they're, they're putting out. But can they do that every month? No, you'll burn them out, right? So we gotta organically grow this thing. Organic means it's solid, it's solid. So what I want you to do is again, you can be a part-time success story in this business. You can be, you can, you can do very well part-time. Heck, I'm still part-time. <laughs> People go, duh, you know, true. Out of the 21 years I've been in my last company, I probably, you know, worked it, I don't know, seven years. What did I do the rest of the time? Anything I want anything I want. So the thing about it is, that's what you have to do. You have to get it to equal what you're making now. I want, I want to, I like, I've heard people say three months. Now I want, I want a sure thing here on this. I want it to be six and it shouldn't be staying at that income level. It should be, you should be growing even past that every month. You should, a percentage increase, a percentage increase, but it's always going to at least balance and never go below what you're currently earning. Then your wife will be cool with it, you know? So get it, that's my challenge, and you can do it part-time. You can do it part, I did it, I did it. 
So that's what I did. I got, you know, once, once I got, and then, of course, keep in mind, that was 27 years ago when I went full-time in network marketing. So when I hit $5,000 and $5,000 27 years ago is different than the 5,000 now, okay? <laughs> Big difference, okay? Uh, so, uh, but back then, once I hit five, I never looked back. And yes, I was nervous. That's okay. I went out there and I hit it hard and it grew. It continued to grow. So Prashant from India asked the question, how to develop a system in your team? You know, we hear the word system. It sounds complicated. It sounds scientific. Really, a system should be no more than the bases in a baseball field, okay? You hear me, some of you might have heard me talk about that. First base is the invitation. You invite somebody. See if, they, if they're if they open to look at what you're doing. Base two is the presentation. That can be taken into a, uh, to a meeting or sending a video. You know, you call them, you see if they're open, will they look, is this a good time to look at the video? If, it, if now's not a good time, don't send it. If it is, send it with the understanding that you're going to call them in 15 minutes. If it's 10 minutes long, you're gonna call them in 15 minutes. And if they haven't looked at the presentation, you never explain the presentation. You just say, hey, something happened, you know. Have you got a little time now? Have you got 10 minutes now? Let's hang on, look at it. I'll call you back in 15. You know, base three is the follow-up. That is the follow-up, calling them back in 15. Any questions, answer it, but that's it. And then bring them home. Home is you sponsor them. Just keep in mind, the more you talk, the less you make. The more you talk, the less you make. So when it comes to a system, you need to have a good video. You should have a Facebook group. A Facebook group that where you do your training with your team about your product, how you do the business. Those are very important components to a system video facebook group very important and have some in there have in your facebook group have a let's you know let's get started video nice and sweet and short cover the bases don't hit them with a lot you'll blow them out all you want to do is get them going making some money and that's all and once they start making some money they'll believe it works so and then barb Trotman says, I have a huge team in my business, but what I don't understand is why people join and never buy anything ever. Why would people join a business and do nothing with it? Okay. <clears throat> well, I can give you, Barb, here's the thing. Most people that join a network marketing company join because of the product. They're not joining a business. See, that's the misconception that uh, all the critics have of us out there, you know, truth and advertising, um, you know, different organizations out there. They, they look at say, well, the majority of your people don't make money. Well, the majority of our people are consumers. So, um, but, but, but again, you said, why would they join without buying anything? You know, I wouldn't let them join if they're not going to buy. What's the point? Really? Um, you know, so, uh, and, and second, again, if you have a Facebook group where you explain your product, you do product training, people share what's happening with them, uh, you know, how the, their experiences with the product. If you have that and you add them to that, even before they join, they can see the value in your product. See, something's missing. They just don't, they either don't understand your product. It hasn't been explained well. Uh, but I wouldn't sponsor them or sign them up unless they're, they're coming with a, an order. What's the point? I, I just wouldn't do it. So just understand again now, and you're, and you're, you're, you sound like a 15 or five on the 80, 15, five. Keep in mind, 80% of the people uh, that join are joining just, you know, for the product or just to make a few hundred dollars or maybe up to even a thousand dollars eventually. But keep in mind, in the beginning, they, they have uh, no belief to believe that they would earn anything or that they're even joining a business. But it doesn't sound like they even understand or can relate to your product yet. Use the Facebook group, add them to that first, and then after that, uh, sponsor them. 
uh, if they're ready to go now, sponsor them and still put them in the group. So then, and then Angelica uh, um, out in New Mexico, is it? How do you take an invitation? Oh, how do you take an invitation? Somebody gives an invitation to join another company that you're not interested in. How would you turn, turn it over and then invite them to look at your offer? <laughs> Don't you love that? <laughs> I'll tell you what. You know, if you take two networkers and you set them down at the same table and they're going to pitch one another, right? What determines who wins? It's the person with the strongest belief. That's right. Whoever has the strongest mental posture, strongest belief is going to be the one who will win. But here's what I don't do. Here's what I don't do. I, I don't go out looking for people and other companies to try to change their mind to join my company. I don't want that. I don't want that. I really don't. If they're in that company, they're working that company, they need to be focused. I can tell you that, and this is a problem with a lot of people, right? You got, I go to Rank Makers event, got, uh, Eric Worre's GoPro Mastery events, and over the years, and I see all these people, and I'm, I'm looking at, has anybody been in their company even a year yet, even one year? I mean, I've been in mine 20, now, now 21, and I'm, I'm like this, you know, what, what's the deal? And, and so, Absolutely, we can, uh, Mindy. But uh, but but that's the thing. And so uh, you know, so with people is I can remember 21 years ago that when I started in December next month, 21 years ago, and I'm focused and and again I'm going eight to faint, eight in the morning till I faint. 90 days, go crazy, bust it out, get it done. But in the meantime, I get these phone calls, right? And they say, hey, Jeff, man, glad I caught you. I, I got involved in this company. They have an unbelievable quasi-compensation plan, blows binaries out. This thing is supercharged, going to create more millionaires. You can be one. Let me explain to you how it works. And I'm like, stop, 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 stop. John, John, stop. Dude, listen. Hey, you know, you know you can't make it in network marketing in your company if you're not focused, right? Yeah, right. Well, man, I'm focused. I'm focused. So I, if I spend my time looking at your deal, the next guy's deal, the next guy's deal that's calling me, if I do that, I'm not building my deal. This is mine. This is what I got to do. So I can't build mine by looking at yours. So here's the thing. Good luck. Love you, man. Stay in touch. And, you know, three to six months from now, let's get together, compare notes, okay? And I can let you know what's happening with me, how it's going for me. And I hope, I wish you well. But you you know, you're going to have to be focused on yours. Good talking to you, man. I got to go back to work. And every time I got a phone call like that from somebody, that's exactly what I said. I didn't sit there politely, listen to them pitch their deal. No, because I'm stealing from myself. I'm stealing from my downline who I, I, I made an agreement that I was going to help them build the business. Well, I'm not keeping my word if I'm looking at everybody else's company. If I'm looking at all those companies, how am I going to build my company? Well, I can't. I can't. So you got to stay focused. And, uh, and, so the, and, and so I don't chase networkers, Angelica. I, I just don't. I don't do it. It's such a big world out there. You know why? I mean, there's so many. And the majority of people out there are not in network marketing. So why? You know, it's like it's like the, the wagon circle and the Indians are around the wagons, and we want we we want the Indians, right? But no, everybody's in this circle shooting at one another. All the wagons are shooting at one another. It's like crazy. Who does this, right? But but there's a lot of people out there, and that's all they do. They just want to, you know, do that very thing. So, um, and so. Uh, and then George sent me something here. And if I miss somebody, I apologize. I really do. Uh, George, what did you send me? Uh, George said something here. Oh, Rocia says, what, what do you say for leaders that say, I don't have time? Oh, I like that one. Uh, here's what I say. You know what? 
I, I don't have time either. Matter of fact, when I started this business, I didn't have time. But you know why I joined? I, they have a system. They have a system for busy people. And it's with that system with very little time. I'm talking about very little time because I'm using the system that I was able to create a second income stream in my life. And I'm loving it. Now I've got money to invest in the stock market, into real estate or blah, blah, blah. Or you can say, yeah, you know what? I'm a busy person too. Matter of fact, we have a system for busy people. That's what happened for me. When I looked at it, I said, that's for me. Doesn't take hardly any time at all. Create a second income stream. Now I got money to go out and play and have fun with. Yeah, we're all busy, right? So that's my answer on that. Um, who else? What else? Uh, <laughs> Mindy says, uh, hey, we badass ladies can talk some good football too, Jeff. <laughs> Mindy can. Mindy can. Yes, that's very true. Very funny. I like that. Uh, so, uh, Eduardo, uh, says, uh, get the longer line, much opportunity. Oh, so that, I, that's it. Uh, George, I don't know what you're, you, you just want to send me Mindy's comment about football, huh? Okay. So we have Christina Abbott. Hey, Christina. And how do you help people who join your team not feel overwhelmed when they begin, even when there is a system to follow? even when there is a system to follow. And you see, that's, that's the thing. And, um, you know, I don't, I'm not familiar with your system, Christina. Again, you know, that's why I said, like, when, when, when we onboard new people in your Facebook group, you should have a Let's Getting Started video. It shouldn't be more than a few minutes long. And just give them some baby steps. That's all they need to see. Now, I think sometimes they get overwhelmed when we, talk, when we talk about our illustrious upline, our superstars, and we get them on these, you know, Facebook live calls and things like that, or get on their trainings, their Zoom calls. And then, of course, and they show up and they're, you know, it's like the great and powerful Oz, right? They blow out the smoke and awesome training, great stuff. To a new person, it is massive overwhelm. I, you know, it's like I want to isolate these new people. When you onboard people, the best thing you can do is isolate them from all this stuff. And then just give them those baby steps. All you wanna do is help them make a win. You know, it's like football, right? So, I mean, you know, how many times do, do you see Tom Brady throw a ball from one side of the field, clear down to the other uh, side of the field and a guy catches it and makes a touchdown? That's very rare, isn't it? For any team. It's always, you know, 10 yards, you get to 10 yards and then you get to 20 yards and then it's a first down and then it's a second down and then it's progressive, it's progressive and then finally it's touchdown, okay? And that's how we should onboard new people. We, get, we, we just do these, bit, we, we wanna get some wins. And the first thing that you can do their very first month, help them with that list, make sure they're not, um, you know, just help them with the list and help them with the baby steps. Make the journey with them, help them onboard some people themselves, and then help them with those people. They're not ready. They're not ready to train them. They're not ready to run with them. So they need to borrow strength from you. And then, and then, and that's what I would do. I would just, you know, it, it, it's easy to get overwhelmed. I, I look at even Bob Heilig, my good friend. He's, Bob is just awesome. I love Bob. But Bob, you know, this is just an illustration, but when Bob wanted to be a trainer, he was looking at all these different trainers out there, Ray Higdon, uh, Eric Worre, uh, this person, that person, so many different trainers. And then, you know, finally he saw an interview with uh, uh, Oprah Winfrey. And, um, and so when, when she was interviewed, she, uh, they asked her the question, you know, how did your sh show become such a success when other shows that were airing at the same time we're, I mean, doing fantastic. How did you become a success? And she said, I had a policy with my staff never to look at their shows. And when Bob Heilig heard that, he unplugged. I'm not saying you have to unplug from everybody. Don't unplug from me. <laughs> Point is, 
if we start taking new people and we start introducing them to all these great superstars in social media, I promise you that's a recipe to confuse the heck out of them. Now, I'm not saying you did that or that's your case, uh, Christina. It, it may not be at all. But, uh, but what I'm saying is it's a sure thing that if you have a system and, and no doubt, and keep in mind, Christina, we all, you know, I have to, you know, regroup and try to remember what it was like when I started. I have to remember that. I have to remember my feelings, my thinking, my fears, my doubts, my insecurities. I have to remember that and how I had to fight through that to finally become a confident leader. So, you know, they're not, you know, they're, they're just, that's where they are. So, and so it's just very important that we just show them that the simple baby steps, that's all we want them to master, the invitation, the presentation, the presentation could be a video, they don't have to be an expert. Um, uh, you're gonna be with them there. And then, and then, you know, the follow up and then bringing them home. And that is uh, getting them involved in your products, getting them involved in enrolling and becoming a member in your company. So those are the, those are the things. And if that's all they did their first year, fine. They don't need this other stuff. They don't need it. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, we set this thing up where now it's become a monster where now people are dependent on, on more education. We have to be the expert now. And so we have to go to the next seminar. We got to read the next book. We got to get on the next Facebook Live with the superstar. Uh, and it's always the next, the next, the next, because we aren't ready. That's that we're coming from that with that I'm not enough. Yes, you are enough. I mean, back 21 years ago, I didn't have that. I didn't have that. We did, we did the baby steps, put them in. It's no different today. Principles do not change, just the tools. And you got different tools now. So, uh, and it's great, it's easier. I mean, it's, it's much nicer. But isolate them if you can, and then, and then work with them uh, on mastering those, those baby steps. That's the key. That's what makes, I'll tell you what, you get everybody doing that, <laughs> you know, they're gonna be writing books about you. They're gonna say, oh my God, the woman's a superstar. She's unbelievable. What? She has the secret to success, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> Because you mastered, you taught everybody how to master the baby steps. You know, you look at your first position, your first leadership position in your compensation plan. Let's say it's called diamond. Let's just, we'll just use that expression, diamond. Let's say that uh, it's three, let's just throw a number out. Let's say it's 3,000 points or $3,000. We'll just use that, okay? Um, if, if, if we get everybody thinking, Harvest diamonds, harvest diamonds, harvest diamonds. You want to get to the next rank? Harvest diamonds. You want to get to the next rank? It's not recruiting people or getting people to the rank below you. It's harvest diamonds. You want to get to the top rank? Harvest more diamonds. It all organically pushes you up. People get so fixed on these upper levels in the compensation plan, and that's not where it's at. It's at that first rank position that is the heart of the organization that's the heart of the company and that's where a lot of your training and focus has got to go and that's where these people are that's where these people are and that is their second that's their side gig that's their side gig and so instead of them running to uber or something else we're just showing them a way to create residual income but we got to isolate them from all the hype uh, and, and from overtraining them and throwing way too much at them. So I think George is, um, I think he did it. That's it. Everyone, it's been wonderful to spend Friday night with you. Totally awesome. I was able to get to my gym and work out downstairs before I did this call. So that was nice. I got my blood going. I've been wanting to get down there. Anyway, I appreciate all you joining me tonight. So I'll put something out tomorrow. I got some Facebook live trainings I'm doing in groups tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to that. But I want to wish everyone a wonderful day. If you're in Asia, it's day. I see Prashant. He's in India. So the sun is shining in India. Believe it or not, it is. 
But for those of you in North South America, listen, have a wonderful evening. And thanks for getting on tonight with me. It's been awesome. Take care.